When I first became a NASCAR fan, I only knew Rick Corelli as one of the Truck Series drivers in NASCAR Rumble. Now that I'm older, I've found his racing career to be one of the most interesting. Born and raised in Arvada, Colorado, Rick Corelli started his racing career in 1973, following in the footsteps of his older brother. And eventually, he made continuous travels from Colorado, competing in late model events in almost all 50 states in Canada, all while still competing at his home track of Lakeside Speedway every Sunday night from May to August. 1987 marked the first year Corelli started competing in NASCAR's touring divisions. He competed in the Southwest Series, where in his three full-time seasons being in 87, 91, and 92, he won a combined 15 races and even took home a championship in 1991. Car owner Marshall Ches Round, who was based in Denver, Colorado, had found a ton of success with Rick Corelli and wanted to expand his operation. You would think he would start off slow, but nope, they moved straight to the Cup Series and actually qualified for a few races. While their best points finish ended up being 21st, if you look a little deeper, not only did they compete in both of the NASCAR Suzuka specials, but in the first one in 1996, they scored a top 10 finish. 1994 marked the beginning of the NASCAR Truck Series, and one of the first drivers to compete was Rick Corelli. Last tour around the track for Rick Corelli. Looking to go down in history as the first Super Truck Series winner. Checkered flag and Rick Corelli will be greeted by Glenn Jarrett in victory lane. Once they began points racing in 1995, Corelli established himself as one of the top drivers. He was never a championship contender, but he was definitely one of the series' early faces, putting together three straight top 10 points finishes from 95 to 97. The top moment, of course, being his first official truck series win at Bristol in 96. Even though his top 10 point streak ended in 98, he still put together another season scoring double digit top 10s along with his second career win at Gateway. Those first four seasons were solid, but early on it was looking like 1999 could be different. At Mesa Marin, he scored his third career win. This was the fourth race of the season, meaning it was the earliest he had ever won in the series. After the first five races, he was sitting six in points. Another solid start to the season, and maybe this could be the year he finally finishes top five or could make a championship run. Unfortunately, we will never know because on May 8th, 1999 at Memphis Motorsports Park, Corelli ended up crashing and while he had been involved in many crazy incidents over the years, but as you're about to see, for obvious reasons, none of them would compare to this one. In the Memphis 200, Corelli started 11th and was working his way towards the top 10, and was able to do so before the first caution on lap 6. He swerved to avoid a spinning Bobby Hamilton, but couldn't avoid contact, slightly bumping the 4. Soon after the restart, the fender came down on the tire. Corelli tried to ride it out, and in the process, nearly paid the ultimate price. Boy, he's got a problem with that left front. You had a horrible, horrible wreck. How fast were you going when you hit the wall? It doesn't. I mean, I don't know. Probably 100 and some miles an hour. But it doesn't matter about the speed. It's all about the angle and everything that you hit it at. Left front tire was rubbing, and I was told to pit multiple times. I didn't. Next thing you know, the left front tire blew, and I went in the fence and pretty much uh, broke my skull, knocked my eyes crooked, bled out, had a dissective crowd of artery, and... Uh, CSF league. You get your rights read to you multiple times when you're in the hospital, and next thing you know, uh, I just said if it's, that's what it was going to be, that's what it was going to be, but I never gave up. 
And the biggest thing with me, my hard head, I just figured I, I couldn't die if I didn't go to sleep. I just never believed I was going to die. So I says, if I don't close my eyes, I'm still in right. control. Corelli suffered a basilar skull fracture, which was a common fatal injury back in those days. After the collision, he tried to jerk his helmet off because he felt claustrophobic. He knew something was wrong. Once he got his helmet off, he grabbed his face and saw the blood. He was bleeding heavily from his ears. He was rushed to the hospital with blood flowing from his ears, but amazingly, he never lost consciousness. He stayed up for three whole days fighting for his life. As you heard from the previous audio clips, he would live to tell the tale. They had my ankle banded, basically, instead of my wrist, and I told them to take that off in a, in a nice frame of words. You know, and then uh, they come in and say, well, you know, we just scanned him and he, X number of years, he was like 40 some years old. And they go, his organs are great. You know, is he a donor? It's like, I heard what you guys are saying. It just wasn't my turn. That's, that, I, I, I thoroughly believe we have a ticket in this world and a ticket out. So when it's punched, it's punched. But God wasn't ready to punch Corelli's ticket as he would become the third driver in NASCAR history to survive a Basler skull fracture. Along with the skull fracture, he suffered a concussion, nerve damage, blood clots, and considerable bleeding internally and through his ears. The skull fracture caused major vision problems and left him with no depth perception. And just like Ernie Irvin and Stanley Smith, Corelli would go on to race again. But the wreck was so bad, his previous owner couldn't handle it and shut down the team shortly after. For 2000, he signed with Felon Motorsports and ran the entire season. For the most part, he didn't miss a beat. He ran right around where he usually does, but he would have had better stats on paper if it wasn't for seven mechanical failures. The comeback would be officially complete on September 7th, 2000 at Richmond. He's trying to hang on to the race lead. A little bit of touching going on down the back straightaway. Both of them on the brakes. You can see the nose dive for the ground. It's going to be Corelli, Marty. Bring him home. Rick Corelli out of turn four from the crash at Memphis to victory in Richmond. What a come. There's Kathy. Oh, don't you know she's so happy. There is going to be a celebration in the Colorado community of Arvada this weekend. After 2000, Corelli never raced full-time again, instead choosing to race sporadically. His final two seasons in trucks were spent driving for Kevin Harvick Incorporated. He was the first driver that wasn't Kevin Harvick to race for the team. He also made a total of 16 ARCA starts from 2001 to 2003, as well as a Bush Series start that same year. He ran a few Grand Am races and actually won at Watkins Glen in 2003. He stopped racing for the most part after 2004 as he occasionally comes back every now and then and later became a team manager for Kevin Harvick Incorporated, a position he held when Ron Hornaday won the 2007 championship. He later became a spotter in the Cup Series for Kurt Busch and now Eric Jones. He even ran a throwback tribute scheme to him in 2018. Rick Corelli remains the last NASCAR driver to survive a Basler skull fracture and hopefully it remains that way forever. Accidents like his helped advance the safety standards we now see today with the Hans device as well as soft walls. He survived the odds and went on to do amazing things since then. And for that, he'll always be remembered as a fighter. And once again, that'll do it for another video. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Black Flags Matter. Catch you next time.